guys, welcome to the video. Um, in this video, I am going to talk about the financial kind of reality of playing professional soccer and how like, yes, if you make it to the elite top 5% of players or whatever, you are set for life and you don't have to worry about money and everything. But for the vast, vast majority of professional footballers, which is like still the elite group of footballers in general, even if you make it up to the pro level, most likely you will not be financially set for the rest of your life. So I kind of want to talk about my experience with that as well as showing you some like stats and figures about like the averages for wages and kind of talk about, you know, my experience playing abroad in like semi-pro leagues and my experience playing in the USL, how uh, like other players I know, what they do after retirement, just kind of talk about money in this video. Um, but first, I'm gonna get a little workout in I'm gonna get a training session in and at the end I'll talk about it. So if you guys just wanna go straight to the financial part, go to this time on the screen right now. Um, but if you wanna stick around and watch the full video, be my guest. <laughs> Okay, so I'm about ready to start my workout. One thing I'm gonna do, and I'm really excited about it, is I'm doing this thing called the Elite Test. And I'll put it on the screen right now, but it's basically work out twice a day for at least 45 minutes in each session. I wanna do 10 minutes of some sort of mental training, whether that's breath work, whether that's meditation, whether that's journaling or whatever. 10 minutes of stretching, and then I wanna read at least 10 pages of any book. And that elite test, that's kind of based off of a very famous 75 hard, which is a book or a theory or a challenge set by Andy Frisella, Frisella um, that I just randomly heard about when I was in Hawaii. And so I, I like the idea. I like parts of the 75 hard challenge. So I'm kind of taking that challenge, putting my own spin on it and creating my own like become elite challenge for just the month of December. And if I do miss something, let's say like tomorrow, I miss one of the things, I miss a secondary workout or something, I'll just keep it updated, but I'm not gonna quit the challenge. I wanna see how many perfect days I can do through the month of December, and hopefully I do 31 perfect days. So I'll get the workout started. It's gonna be a little, uh, little bike ride and an upper body session. And uh, yeah, we'll tick off the first box of the, uh, the first workout for the elite test. Okay, so just finished the uh, the upper body session really good. In total, it was 56 minutes long. My arms are dead and shaking, so really good. Now, before I go and make breakfast, I'm gonna do a 10 minute guided meditation. So I'm gonna just find, I'm literally just typing this into YouTube right now, and I'll just pick a good one. I'm gonna do the Daily Calm 10 minute mindfulness meditation. Be present by Calm. Train in the morning and then get a workout after. But for today, for whatever reason, I decided to switch it. 
Um, I'm going to do an individual session today because I'm supposed to be quarantining for a few days up to a week after Hawaii. So I'm gonna just do a full session by myself today. Um, and I really want to do a good like warm up, do some technical dribbling and passing. But again, I really want the focus of today to be about different crosses and uh, striking of the ball and stuff like that. I think that's what I really wanna work on as well as like 1v1 uh, creativity and stuff. So uh, I'm gonna get a warm up in and the first drill will be a little dribbling to an in-step pass. So let's get it. It's beautiful today. It's like, it said 40 degrees, so I thought it was gonna be pretty cold, but with the sun out and there's barely any wind, it's, I'm heating up fast, so awesome. Beautiful day. The next drill I'm gonna do is like a warm up, like crossing technique kind of drill. So what I did is I just laid all 13 balls that I had right across the 18 yard line, and all I'm gonna do is just repeatedly hit each one with that crossing technique, trying to get it so it's like towards the top half of the goal and it has that crossing motion that's curling up in there.
So, I'm exactly an hour into the session. I do, I do feel a little rusty from like a week of not having a high level training from after being in Hawaii, but it is decent. Just the crossing wasn't very sharp. So, I mean, that's gonna be the goal to, whenever you take a break, is to work back into it, but decent. But the reason why I love doing individual sessions and throwing them into my routine is because like, I probably got 50, 60 crosses in today. And you can't do that when you have like a group because everybody wants reps and everybody wants to do something. So I love doing that. I'm just gonna finish with like five, 10 minutes of juggling, just the standard juggles, kick it up, trap it back down into a juggle and keep going. But probably just like five minutes of that. So Woo, let's do it. Oh, and I didn't do the left side just because I'm, I'm dead. I, I was just so focused on getting the right the right foot in and attacking from this right full back side, which is what I think I'm gonna be playing this next season, um, that I, I didn't, I just, it was just too much. So now just hop in a juggling. I'm doing? Mom told me about it. The same one, the, it's kind of like Bobby's but condensed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it is four o'clock in the afternoon right now. I'm just going to sit down and talk about the title of this video, which is the financial realities of playing professional soccer. And this whole idea was sparked by a, a question from the continuous Q and A from Kareem Zirbin. And Kareem asks, many people associate becoming a professional footballer with making a lot of money. While that may be the case for players who play in the top five leagues, not all professionals will experience this idea of guaranteed wealth. Could you go over the financial realities slash lifestyle of a professional soccer player in the second or third division team? Would the income be enough to support a family with children? Would the player need to have other sources of income besides soccer? And or would the player need another job after retiring professionally? Thank you. To sum this up very quickly, 99% of professional soccer players will get a job post-retirement to make more money. And even if you do make it to one of these top five leagues, even if you do make it to a Premier League team, even if you do make it to a La Liga team, you have to not only just make it there, but then you have to survive there, which is an incredibly, incredibly difficult thing to do. And you guys are very used to seeing players survive there because that's the top of the top. You're seeing Sergio Ramos and Cristiano Ronaldo and all of these players who have decades in these top five leagues. But the reality is majority of those players will get there or bounce in there for a year or two, maybe even five years. But to stay there is very difficult and they'll drop down, they'll struggle with an injury, they'll have to get loaned out. And basically after a few years, they're back making a very normal salary again. So even if you make it to those top five leagues, unless you're a starter there consistently for years and years and years, you will not have this guaranteed wealth and, and never need to work a day in your life because it's very, very difficult and life, life is expensive. And to show you the, the actual reality of the finances of professional soccer players, I want to bring up a couple stats from the 2016 FIF Pro Global Employment Report. First of all, this is an absolutely amazing, amazing resource that I highly, highly suggest every single one of you to download and read through, at least skim through it. I'll link it in the description, but it's absolutely amazing. And I think every single player that wants to be a pro should read through this just to get a little bit of an understanding of, of what it's like, because it's very, very accurate. Now in this report, they surveyed almost 14,000 professional footballers in 87 different leagues across 54 different countries. And their goal was basically to figure out what the professional working environment looks like globally. 
and they surveyed players in the top teams and, and the top clubs in the world in La Liga and in France and in Italy and they also talked to teams in Africa and the Americas and the United States and they asked all these players about how much they make. They asked them have they ever experienced late payments? They asked them how long their contract was? Have they ever been involved in mat match fixing? And they asked them all these very insightful questions and it was done anonymously to really get a good representation of what that market looks like. And the results are, are pretty eye-opening if you've never been a professional footballer before. If you have been, you'll probably say, yeah, that's pretty much what I experienced. But if you've never you know, dipped your toe into the professional footballing world, uh, I, I think you'll be pretty surprised. In fact, only 2% of professional footballers make 720,000 US dollars a year or more. I think that's where you kind of talk about making that guaranteed wealth, where if you save it correctly, invest it correctly, you never have to work again a day in your life. And that's only 2% of professional footballers. And that's not 2% of all footballers in the world. This is 2% of professional footballers. So even if you're among the elite players in the world to make it to the professional level, you now need to get to the elite level of professionals in order to make that guaranteed wealth where you don't need to work again. And that's assuming that you can stay there year after year because many players will make that for a year or two years, but then they're dropping back down and making five figures again. And all of a sudden they're slapped with the reality of, wow, I am not gonna make that every single year of my career for the rest of my life. Now to give you a full breakdown of, uh, of how much players make, 45.3% of professional footballers make less than $1,000 per month. 29.1% make between $1,001 and $4,000 per month. 11.5% make between $4,001 per month and $8,000 per month. And 14.2% make over $8,000 a month. And the first thing that I, I get every single time I bring this stat up, and but players always go, how can you be a pro if you're making less than $1,000 a month? That's not professional football, that's semi-pro football. And the first answer is that this is surveying professional teams and professional leagues around the world, from the Congo of Africa, South Africa, to Brazil, to Uruguay, to United States, to uh, Spain. So there's a very different standard of living and $1,000 a month is very different if you're living in LA versus if you're living somewhere like Johannesburg. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of how things work. $1,000 is, is very different. And the second thing that people don't realize is that many per fully professional teams in fully professional leagues um, will offer rookie players that are desperate to get their foot in the door very insultingly low offers for their contract because they know these players have no leverage. It, it might be their first contract ever and they could take advantage of that because they know this player that's very young, that wants the sniff of, a, of the professional game, is willing to take pretty much anything, crumbs, pennies, to get his foot into the door and the hopes of making more money later on. And even in the USL Championship, the, the second division of the US, I've seen players fall into all four of these categories. I've seen players make just a few hundred dollars a month scraping by with their free housing, eating leftover pizza multiple days in a row, and I've seen players making six figures. That's also why that line between who's a semi-pro and who's a pro is very, very blurred. Because who's more of a pro? Are you more of a pro if you play in a fully pro team in a fully professional league, but you're making a few hundred dollars a month? Or are you more of a pro if you play in a semi-pro league for like a semi-pro team, but you're making $3,000 a month? And I've seen that happen. I've seen players leave the professional footballing world to go play semi-pro and to make more money. But here's some crazy facts that stood out to me just as I was browsing through this, uh, this report. But 83.5% of professional footballers in Brazil make less than 1,000 US dollars per month. And like I said, 1,000 US dollars in Brazil goes a little bit further than 1,000 US dollars in Los Angeles, but still, that's pretty eye-opening. If you think of a professional footballer playing professionally down in Brazil, most likely they're making less than $1,000 a month. But in your head, you're thinking they're set, that they've made it. Or 56.4% of professional footballers in Ireland make less than 1,000 US dollars per month. Now we're in a completely first world country with an amazing league and, and it's just, it just is so surprising to hear that 
that over half of professional footballers in this in these leagues in this country are making pennies so those are the stats and facts um, that i wanted to bring up but what are my personal opinions on it what, what have i experienced my very first contract over in germany which was not in a professional league it was not with a professional team um, but i was still being paid to play i fell into that bottom category there's no way that i could support a family i wasn't even thinking about retiring off of that money i'm just thinking do i have enough money to buy groceries my bus ticket and my gym membership. That's also what sparked the full thinking behind starting Become Elite and starting another job. And because I, I didn't know, I didn't know if I was gonna spend years at this level or if I was gonna push up, I had no idea. So I was thinking about getting another job. I was just thinking about surviving at that point. However, over the years, I've been fortunate enough to climb and grind and claw my way out of these categories and to push higher and higher and higher with really just one slight hiccup because of injuries and everything. But I'm realistic and I know that even as a player, you know, that's had a very fortunate career that still it's very, very hard to push up in that global elite of that 14% of players that are making six figures a year. And still, even if you are fortunate enough and you have some great luck and some great seasons and everything falls into place and you get to push up to that level, still, many times you're not gonna be retiring from that fully. You're still gonna need another job post-retirement. And in fact, every single player that I've seen retire or quit or do whatever, every player in the USL, every player that I know that's played in the MLS, and even players, like I've said, that have played top leagues like La Liga and the Premier League and Bundesliga, play those leagues for years, still end up needing a job post-retirement because even even though they've made it to those leagues they're still not the elite of the elite and they haven't played there for 20 years they got a taste of it they got a glimpse of it but then they had to come back down and it's very very difficult to retire off of a career like that and i've seen players go back to school i've seen players become doctors i've seen players become coaches or club coaches or college coaches i've seen players become construction workers and teachers or enter the business world they just do whatever their backup plan is or they create a new backup plan once they're all retired and for me specifically there's no way i'm going to be able to retire from my professional soccer contracts alone there's absolutely no way i'm at the level right now where i can live a pretty comfortable life solely off of my professional contracts but as you've probably seen through my youtube channel and you've seen me over the years i've had to grind and claw my way out of these bottom categories and it's not been an easy path. And many, many times I was unsure of where I was gonna go up next, or I had spells of free agencies or injuries, and it's just not an easy path. And having said all of that, I still think I have a very fortunate career compared to the majority of players out there. To be 100% honest and transparent, I could have made much, much, much more money, much, much more easily if I would have just stayed at Davis, finished out that last semester, and then gone into the business world or become an accountant or become an actuary or even become a teacher. I'm not saying that those jobs are easy or, or, or bad or anything, but I'm just saying that I could have made a lot more money a lot quicker if I would have gone through those paths. However, there's a reason why I haven't quit playing professional soccer and there's a reason why I continue to go through this because personally, I think still, despite everything I've said, that this is still the best job in the entire world. And I know that when I'm lying on my deathbed and I'm hopefully very old and I'm looking back throughout my life, I will have zero regrets about the path, the career path that I chose to pursue because it's been an amazing, amazing journey and I really wouldn't trade it for anything. It's been so fulfilling that it makes everything worth it. So that's my insight and some insight from FIF Pro and their global report about what the reality of, of the financial side of playing professional soccer really looks like. I have no idea if you guys were surprised by this, if that's what you thought or, or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, it's very, very interesting. And again, I highly, highly suggest reading that PDF document in the description or at least skimming through it just to uh, give you even more insight on what it's like to uh, play pro. Okay, so it's 8.17 at night. I'll probably read until about nine o'clock, so I'll easily get in my, uh, my 10 pages in. I'm reading the third book of the Dune series, which is like that sci-fi, just random fiction book. So um, I'm going to get my 10 pages in, and then I'm gonna pass out and then repeat 
all again tomorrow. So I hope you guys like this video. I really hope that that, that you got some insight as well from like the financial side of, of pro football and everything. But if you did learn something or something did surprise you or you have any questions or anything, you know, as always answer or, or comment below. And if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Peace.